There's that guy in that old shirt Who must be the fence expert Who's that guy in that old Operations and expenses It's time, it's really time To elevate small businesses It's time, with Joe and Jock This knowledge is relentless This rhyme of mine Is getting up and ridiculous And here we go We're live with Joe In the show What is up, Fitz fam? So glad you guys are joining us again For another weekly live Ask the Experts Q&A, or actually, I think that's supposed to be Ask the Experts Live Q&A, but, you know, you get it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. This is going to be another huge week. Uh, for those of you that are listening to the podcast, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, this is a recorded version of a live conversation that I hold almost every Saturday. We, we're at it for like the last couple months, but uh, almost every Saturday from 10 to 11-ish, 11.30-ish Central Standard Time. Uh, you can find the show by searching Joe Everest on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, basically wherever you like watching your videos, there's a good chance this show is going live there, except for you'll have to go independently to TikTok, which is watching the show live from my cell phone because TikTok doesn't open up their API to, to uh, StreamYard. So, you know, if you're TikTok, if you're listening, consider that. So guys, uh, today's guest, if you've read the, uh, if you read the description, you know who exactly who it is. The one, the only, Ken Throckmorton. Hey, Joe. Ken, how are you, sir? Great. Hey, I lost my shirt. Now I know where it's at. Uh, same, 
Same. I left your shirt behind one time, and I that's where it ended up, huh? Yeah. No, what's funny is, so <laughs> this shirt is one of two um, that I'm allowed to take on vacation. Well, I allowed might be taking it a bit far. So I was given a directive that I could not take Ozark Finch shirts on vacation. It's like, hmm, okay. Well, I've got a couple orange shirts here that uh, aren't technically Ozark Fence. So, yeah, this is my vacation shirt. <laughs> Come on. So, Ken, for the, like the four or five people out there that might not know who you are, why don't you give a brief introduction? Who are you? So, my name is Ken Throckmorton. I own Forever Fence and Rail here in uh, Sharon Center, Ohio. Um, we are primarily residential. Okay. Uh, we also do wholesale with the Homeland Vinyl for some vinyl and customers around there. Nice. Um, so, we fabricate vinyl in house. And we'll touch a little bit later. We're actually going to bring the students to my shop so they can actually utilize a router and a crimper and see a, a fabrication shop. Nice. Get some good hands-on experience with the uh, with the actual equipment. Yep. Let's let's dive right into it, Ken. Um, so you had reached out to me actually just like a couple days ago. You're like, hey, um, can we talk about this event? And it's like, uh, actually, yes, because I had gotten I'd already gotten a question from someone else about the event. I was like, you know, I don't know too much about it. So let me reach out. I know some guys I could reach out to. And it was like 15 minutes later, you messaged me about it. It's like, I've got the guy. I got the that guy aligned. about the event. Stars aligned. That's right. That's right. So, so what we're talking about, guys, is the AFAU event coming to Ohio in what, three weeks? In a few weeks? Three weeks. Yep. So, so normally we have it in November. Right. And we have gates or gate programs there with the installation and the design school, mm -hmm. and uh, we do the fence installation school. In the years past, uh, one of my first events ever with AFA besides Fence Tech was going to sales training school. Yep. Um, and so we're jumping on the bandwagon of fence week. And then in November, we're going to have gate week. So we're going to split. Okay. It up. We're not going to be doing fence installation in November this year. Okay. It's good to know. So if, if you're thinking about sending a, a gal or girl or gal or guy to the school, this is the event you need to send them to. This is this is the this is the event. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that makes sense, though, because you're actually giving room for each event kind of to, to grow into its own, um, which makes sense. As things grow, you got to start separating them off and letting them become their own thing. So tell me a little bit about so it's moving to Ohio. So it used to be in Arlington. Uh, so now it's moving to Ohio. The the June event is moving to Ohio. Correct. Is the November event? Is it still going to be in Arlington? Or is that kind of undecided? They're working on some okay. stuff, but it, it, probably. Okay. Don't hold me to the fire. That's probably. fair. No, 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 no. I just, that was just a random thought that popped up is, um, cause I mean, that's a decent choice for in November, right? It's a, uh, there's a decent chance you're going to have okay weather and, uh, and all that. So, um, so fence installation school comes to Ohio. So tell me about the uh, location in Ohio that is coming to. So, the chair happens to live three and a half miles away from a pretty good place um, that was has a banquet facility, has hotels, and actually has an empty field right in the whole facility. We don't have to travel anyone um, or anything like that. So what nice. we will end up doing is, I say we don't have to travel, even though we're going to bring the guys to here for vinyl, but... Sure. Uh, it's going to be laid out. It's, it's, it's a good thing. So we had a on the road, uh, one of the very first on the roads we did with Tony Thornton was here at this event. Okay. And, you know, I told him, I said, what do you think about this place for fence week? He goes, this would be great. But then yeah. COVID, COVID hit and everything else. And, sure. Sure. Um, you're telling me a little bit about it before. It sounds like it, you've got quite a bit of space there for all the disciplines to kind of stretch out and spread their legs a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So if anyone's ever been to Arlington before, um, we're in the back of a parking lot on a hill. It's about 35 foot of a grass area and um, it's about 300 feet. So we divvy up five disciplines in 30, you know, so many feet. This sure. we're in two acres. We have, uh, I think I did the math the other day. 
each discipline is going to have 50 feet by 170 feet to work with. Okay. Okay. There's plenty of room. We're going to do long stretches. Talking to some of the instructors, we're going to be good to go. Nice. Nice. So talking about the different disciplines, let's walk through what disciplines would be handled in the fence installation school. Um, so we're going to have our agricultural fence. Okay. We're going to have our wood fence. We're going to have our vinyl fence, our chain link fence. And did I say ornamental already? Ornamental wood, chain link, ag and vinyl. Got it. Got it. Now has ag been covered before or is that a new addition? No, it's always been done. Okay. Um, and that's the thing. When we do these on the road events or AFA, the mini AFA use, yeah. uh, we haven't seen the, the, the want for the ag. Okay. Uh, we just did one the end of last month in Sacramento and we did ornamental and chain link. Okay. We try to do chain link in every single on the road event because that's yeah. the most popular fencing out there. Sure. Yeah. I think the one, well, the actually the one where I got this shirt uh, was up in uh, Waverly. Yeah, and we did the chain link the first day, and the second day we we're supposed to do vinyl, but then we had like that mini tornado come through, and yeah, you and Cannon were in the same class, and Cannon's having a fit, and I'm trying to do the PowerPoint presentation <laughs> on vinyl, and then I turn around, and I'm like, okay, now I see why he's, yeah. You know. Well, because you were like, your back was to like this cloud yeah. wall, and Cannon's looking at the radar, he's like, hey. Um, I think we should pay attention to this. Is this normal? And everyone's like, oh, it's fine. Meanwhile, we're looking at this black wall cloud going, I don't I don't think that's normal. I'm not from Nebraska, I'm from Missouri, but we're close enough to know kind of what the weather looks like. Right. And then, then the winds came and sucked up all the fence and threw it quite a ways. There was a lot of seven eighths by six privacy pickets going everywhere. <laughs> Just anyway. So I missed the vinyl portion of that. But uh, so talking specifically about the vinyl portion coming up in Ohio. So let's go a little bit more in depth on that because you had, you had mentioned it earlier. They're actually going to visit your shop and get some hands-on experience with some vinyl specific equipment. So just like you did in the, in the uh, Nebraska event, we have an hour, hour and a half of PowerPoint presentations first. Okay. And then we uh, go out in the field and build the fence. It's historically been, I mean, if you, you've installed vinyl you understand but it, it goes relatively quick sure yep so in the past the schools the vinyl schools have been done by three o'clock and everyone the first day everyone's like where did they go <laughs> we're still out here stretching barbed wire where are they going right right yeah. um and so to extend that a little bit we are going to bring them here we're actually going to do the classroom i have a conference room upstairs so we're going to do the classroom upstairs okay then uh we're going to let them see a router obviously with proper ppe but uh see a we have a two-bay single head router nice uh, so we'll show them the programming and then uh we do have a pneumatic notcher because if anyone's ever notched rails after a while <laughs> your shoulders like <laughs> so right. we'll let everyone notch those and and our plan is to uh, you know so your good friend Barry Baker, who's in your chapter, yeah, now working for Homeland, so he's going to yeah. be one of the instructors, and that's a nice thing that a manufacturer rep that has installed fencing, yeah, you can you can respect that a lot more. Absolutely, and he's installed a lot of vinyl. Right. Now he has called me a little bit, say, "Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that?" But sure, he's, sure. he's got it down. Barry's a smart individual. It, it made a lot of sense when, when I had heard about that, that uh, he had gone there. I was like, oh, well, yeah. Like it, from Homeland's perspective, that makes perfect sense. A guy with a ton of experience. Yeah. And he so said I, he picks up in the morning a little bit, feeling a little bit better. <laughs> right. So uh, having a manufacturer's rep there, hands-on experience with the equipment. So that covers vinyl. Yep. And so, but one thing I think you had touched on about, I want to be very clear about it is, the nice thing about these AFAU and and the on the on the road trainings is you get both kind of the classroom theory portion, but also real world hands on. Here's how you install it, sort of thing. Right, and that, that's the thing. I mean, last year in Arlington, we had about thirty students. But we always, when they sign up, say, "Hey, you know, how many years and knowledge and stuff like that you have." Yeah. And then we go through each morning and say, okay, tell us, you know, there was a lot of, this is, 
I, I, I get hired next week. I was just told <laughs> yeah. to come here. Um, I, I'm actually yep. hired, but I, I actually start next week. Sure. So there was a couple people that didn't even know the difference between tension band and brace band. So Fair. people like you and I were like, how can that be? But remember right. our first week or two. Oh, yeah. Oh, I listen, my dad spent some good time on me teaching me the difference between a brace band and a tension band. You Jeff know, like, Walker. yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah, it was an in-depth uh yeah, training on the differences between well because so I started off and I was like 12 or 13. I was I was pretty young. And so it's like so the the meme about the dad working on an engine and the son's holding the flashlight like no over, no over. It, it's the same thing as like dad told me like all right, go get me a dozen tension bands and these me brace bands. I'd look at the list and go, "Oh god." Um Okay, I think I know what this is, and I'd bring it back. You like go? What are you doing? <laughs> did did you do you pay attention at all? Am I speaking English? Like this isn't at all what the list says. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so, yeah. I can remember is what I'm saying pretty vividly the introduction to that. But last year we did the math after we actually you know because we have zero to two years. Then we started asking these people, and we had a couple guys that were there ten years. Or in the yep. industry. You know, you can be as old as you want in the industry. Sure. It, and it's funny because those guys in the class, I don't know why my boss sent me here. I know everything there is to know about fencing. Typically in the first hour of PowerPoint, they pick up something and they're like, you can tell as an instructor sitting up front. They're like, mm -hmm. they just, and I, I personally call them out. I'm like, you just learned something. He goes, oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, you know, but yep. last year, the average knowledge of fencing was seven months. Wow. So, but at the end, they went back. And that's one of the reasons we, we're trying June this year is because some of these employers and managers said that, hey, that's great. They got the knowledge, but then all of a sudden they leave for winter or we have to lay them off for winter and then yep. they get or they don't come back. Right. Right. So we're going to try June. There's never a good time for training. Sure. Really, but let's just try it. Yeah. Well, and you know, in the last several years, it used to be the winter was when you kind of did slow down and take some time and get some training in that sort of thing. But it feels like the last several years, that hasn't been a thing. Like there just hasn't been availability. And so you got to, you got to take time to invest in your team and all that. I mean, kudos to these companies for sending guys with seven months experience or less, yeah. you know, when They're I was investing a, in their own selves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there's, there's this saying is like, well, what happens if we train them and they leave? And the, the, and the guy says, well, what happens if you don't train them and they stay? Like it, that's, which is worse here. Right. No. So the, 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 on the road training, I went to up in Waverly, we had guys that had been in the business for like 30 years. And then we had, to your point, we had a guy that was thinking what, so a little bit different scenario. He was getting ready to start his own fence company. So, it, and he had had some experience in other areas of fencing, like wood. I think he was, they did a lot of wood at the company he was coming from, but the new company, he had to figure a lot more out. Um, so, but even the guys, to your point, the guys that have been doing it for 30 years. Um, so Tony Thornton actually led that one. You want to talk about a guy with some industry knowledge. Right. So he was showing them things like, okay, well now listen, if you did it this way and this way, um, the bias cutting was the biggest thing. Like everyone, like there's a general way you can bias cut, but there's tips and tricks to it. So, so I'll tell you about that. So that was at Matt's property. Yeah. You know, that's his field that he leases out. So Bobcat, he had Bobcat show up with some equipment. Well, I'm like, Hmm, I took that Bobcat and built a little mound. If you yeah. remember, Matt comes out and he goes, what are you doing? This is a field. I'm like, it will disappear. Just calm down. But I, <laughs> we heard the most positive comments on that bias cutting between Alan Olson and, and Tony teaching that class. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's because, well, and if you come from flat land, you probably don't have the opportunity to bias cut that much. You know, I mean, for us, like we live in the Ozarks and it is all this, right? So we pretty much learn how to bias cut in the beginning. But but even but even coming from that, when we were sitting there and watching how other people do, it's like, wait a minute. I thought there was only one way to bias cut, and it was the way that we knew. But like, oh, there might be alternate like tips and tricks to it. Uh, or just as a matter of putting how how everyone the order they put fittings on. Right. 
right? Do you put nuts and bolts in them first and then slip them over the post, or do you do do you weave? Do you put nuts and bolts, put them over the post, and then weave your tension bar in to start? Interesting thought. I hadn't. We hadn't done it that way. Um, but anyway, the point is, even if you've got a ton of time in the industry, you typically still pick up a couple tips and tricks. And that's you know we have ten other great instructors coming to this school, and, and sure. they always say. I learned something, you know, we were in Sacramento and, you know, we give certificates afterwards and we were shaking hands and we were, you know, I asked every one of those students, what did you learn? And they all had something different. Of course, of course. And then the instructors turned around and said, okay, this is what we learned. Cause we actually learn things too. Yes. Yes. We, we, I talked a little bit about that with Caleb a few weeks ago, talking about standing university. And so it's interesting that as you come on. So one of the things I go to talk about is just marketing, video marketing, that sort of thing. And everyone's like, well, why do you do it? Like instructors aren't, aren't paid and we pay our own way and pay our, everything. But I like, because I pick up every single time I'll pick up two, three, four things I didn't know before, or just, tweaks and nuances to things you learn both ways yeah that's a that's a one we should talk about spencer right there all right let's see so spencer says i'm building a fence in my backyard i'm using pre-built fence panels but i have an uneven ground how do i install the fence properly <laughs> so <laughs> well, ken what are your thoughts so i the first couple things i would ask spencer is do you live in an area where there's frost? Yeah, fair. Because in my area, frost, I can't, I gotta still leave a gap on the ground. Yeah. Um, I personally wouldn't use pre built sections because yeah. I personally don't like stepping. There are occasions you have to use a step section. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Sure, sure. But I would, I would, you know, I would try to pre or build it myself. Yeah, so built on site now. Fence genius is here. So we're going to have two sides of this conversation, right? So we, we build on site where either we'll set the post on a Monday. We'll come back on Wednesday because I'm not here for the concrete discussion. We wet set and then we come back and, uh, but anyway, so we'll come back with two befores and pickets and build our own sections. Now there's, there's some proponents of pre-built panels that say they can rack, you know, you could, sometimes you can rack them. And so it depends. So Spencer, it depends on how much variance you have, I guess. Well, if you go um, to a big box store, it's like a furring strip. So yes, you can rack them. Yeah. You, you probably have, there's, you're yeah, probably it's, able to rack it's them. Staple and it's a furring strip. It's, it's, yeah. yeah you, and you want to go back and probably refasten those together once you're done. Um, it's Spencer. It's really, it's it's about as straightforward as you get, right? So you would nail one side and then adjust the other side. Hopefully, it has enough. Your hopefully your ground doesn't vary enough that right. you you get past how much you can rack. Make sure your two panels make sure they align, right? I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, so what Ken's talking about stair stepping is you would have one panel taller than the next and then the next one further down sort of thing to where you have, it looks like a cross section of stairs. So two ways of doing it. I think that I understand that these might be fighting words, but the better looking way is when it flows with the grade. Uh, I hope that helps Spencer. So Spencer did say that they have frost as well. He said yes to frost. So you'd want to leave it up off the ground. Pickets wicking moisture is not great. So it's, a lot of times you'll see pickets, wood pickets with the bottom two inches just rotted on older fences, granted, but the bottom several inches rotted out. It's why in the South you see, and this I get, you can see it everywhere, but I see it more in the South having rot boards at the bottom, a pressure treated two by six typically, or two by eight maybe on the ground and then pickets above that. It's kind of like a sacrificial layer. Um, keep those panels up off the ground a couple inches. It'll also let you weed eat under it if you if you want to, so. We always have a thing in the, in the fence school, we call them Mrs. Johnson's uh, snake dog because every customer thinks their dog's gonna get in <laughs> two inches. Mm -hmm. If they can see daylight under it, they're like, no, no, I said I wanted it on the ground. I know you said you wanted it on the ground, but as a professional, I don't think you want it on the ground. Like, this is, 
one of the reasons you're paying me to come build this fence is we've built these before and we know what to do for long to extend the life of the fence. I always like the ones that want it flat across the top. But also on the ground. Yeah. I had a, we had a customer <laughs> about six years ago. I want it level. Well, we, the ground, mm. she came, had a fit. I actually sure. pulled a string, leveled it up. The fence post being two and a half foot in the ground would have maybe, maybe been in the ground two inches. It was that big of a drop on that whole line. And she's just like, I'll bring dirt in. And she did. I was, it was a process for this fence. <laughs> there's, there's always, we, we could, we could spend hours on fence stories. So yeah. Yeah. Spencer suffice to say, leave a couple inches under the fence. You'll be glad you did for several reasons. Let's say hello to a couple of people while we got a break in the conversation here. So Michael Reed is with us. Welcome, Michael. Great guest. Can't wait for fence week. Absolutely. Michael's going to be there the first couple of days. Very good. So if you'd like to meet Michael in person, that would be a great opportunity. Very good. Michael being the executive director of the American Fence Association. I, <laughs> sometimes I stop and think that anyway. Not everyone may know that. Right, right, right. Uh, Fence Genius was first one in the chat. Good morning from Washington State. Good morning, Fence Genius. I don't have one of his signs. I don't think. Yeah, send a sign to Ken. He'd like to put it up there. Look at that. I was. We were talking about this in the beginning. Like, look at that wall. That is an impressive collection. Let's do a shot up there. We'll do a couple. <laughs> that is nice. Very nice. You see some familiar names up there. Oh, yeah. Alan Bolding is with us from the great state of Oklahoma. What's up, Fence fam? What's up, Alan? Stevie Boy is with us from across the pond. Good afternoon, Joe and the Fence fam. Good afternoon, Stevie. Appreciate you joining us. So, fish, so when we're talking about pre-built panels, if, you, if you're in a market where pre-built panels are prominent, you'd want to check out Fence Genius. Fence Genius my understanding of it, I haven't used it personally, but I've watched enough videos. So if, it, if nothing else, Fence Genius is great about putting out instructional videos on how to use it. So you can set your posts, you measure, you input the information into Fence Genius, and it'll tell you more. It'll tell you how to build the panels or what widths to build and all that. But one thing it also do is help you visualize and your customer visualize. So it'll it'll have a rendering of what the fence would look like. Also, so can you can kind of have that conversation with the client, like this is how it's going to look. If you want a perfectly level top line, you're going to have two foot under this fence. Is that what we're going for? Are, are we sure on that? So check it out if you guys are in a market that does pre-built panels. So this is an interesting. So if you watch videos from over in the UK, um, can't railing, it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting way to build fence. Um, you should check it out. It's I, re I won't do it justice if I try to try to describe it, but it's, it's like a triangle two before, I guess, with a post notched out to where it'll sit in the post. And it's interesting. You should check it out. Um, here's a good one. Nick Franklin says, what are your thoughts on pre-staining your fence boards if you're anticipating having to cut them after they're up to match the slope of the yard? Ken, do you guys do any pre-staining? I mean, you're, I know you're largely vinyl. Right. Um, and so my son actually has a staining company. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. So we push them to my son. Yeah. But we yeah. do not do any pre-staining. Okay. Um, and we're, we're, the thing about our market is we're a lot of pressure treated, so we have to wait. And okay. The moisture content. Yep. 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 Yeah. Pre-staining. We've, we've tried pre-staining pressure where we let it just set in a shop and try to dry and cure and all that yeah it it is as awful as you're imagining it imagining it, it just you gotta, waiting you gotta think too depending on the color because of that pressure treatment it's going to turn this greenish color so you're not getting yep. the true color there's a lot you gotta worry about and you've got to get pressure treated on some structure pretty quickly uh just to keep it from warping twisting cupping so cupping is what we saw a lot of and when we were trying to dry because we we thought we thought this through we knew we had to keep structure on it so we banded it we put drying strips and then banded it to think well maybe we're adding structure there or at least support those boards cupped like crazy so question 
uh, is pre-staining your fence boards if you anticipate having to cut them after they match the slope of the yard. We still do it. So we'll fully submerge the boards in stain, whether we're talking about two by fours or pickets, et cetera. But then on all the pre-stain jobs, we send about a gallon of stain with the guys so that they can touch up any cuts. Now we use expert stain and seals line of products, obviously it soaks into the wood. So it is a penetrating oil-based stain to where even if you cut, cut a portion off, that wood is still preserved inside, but it doesn't match the rest of the fence. It's going to look obvious. So then we send the guys with some touch-up stain. So it's always a good idea. A lot of times they bring the stain back because we don't have to cut it, but I'd rather they take the stain with them just in case. Front Rock Fence is with us. Good morning, Fence fam. Good morning, Front Rock Fence. Jeremy is with us from Fort Worth. Good morning, Jeremy. Shane Yarborough says, key phrase there, as the professional. That's so let me, let me touch on, on Shane a little bit there. Okay, yeah. So Shane was an instructor in wood with Dan Wheeler last year in Arlington. Okay. Um, in years past, myself and Pat Bailey, who's no longer in the fence industry, did the sales training school. So it's been completely revamped, modernized with, you know, we have a lot more different CRMs out there these days. Yeah. You know, they're still going to talk about the sales cycle, but Shane Yarbrough and Randy Ward are going to be the instructors for that. Okay. Good to know. So Let's, that's that's th Monday and Tuesday. It's a two-day class. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because I was wanting to come back around to that, that it's not only fence installation school. No. Right. So uh, can you go a little bit more in depth on what else is going to be there besides the fence installation school? Well, the fence installation school and the sales training school. Okay. Um, we we're going to look at a different one, but it just didn't pan out. So those okay. are the two schools we're going to work on. Um, and Shane and Randy both have a lot of knowledge. Shane has a lot of knowledge of sales before entering the fence industry. Um, okay. And Randy's been around. I mean, if you know Randy Ward, he's been around long enough that, I mean, he's just a great guy. Plus, he, yeah. he brings it. The thing we did in the past with Pat Bailey and myself was I'm a contractor mm -hmm. dealing with homeowners where he is a manufacturer rep dealing with fencers. Yeah. It's still a sales cycle and how yeah. it works, but there's different ways to go around it. And so Randy's really going to be great at that because he works for Binford. And sure. So he's going to have that knowledge, but he also has the knowledge of digging holes, which he's right. done. Right. He, so. He's understood. He's had experience on both sides of the, of the table, really the business to business and business to customer or client. Yep. So that's, those are two exciting schools. Very good. So let's talk a little bit then what is, what is happening in November then? So for handling fence installation school and sales training in June, what happens in November? So we're going to do have the gate school, the, the okay. installers and the designer. There's a technician school, I should say. Okay. The gate automation. Yes. Okay. So, and so we're talking about design layout, that sort of thing, but also installation and servicing. Yeah. So if, if you've ever heard or seen the school, uh, Scott Meckes runs that up, uh, but they actually go from, um, you know, they'll actually learn the electrical work with it. Okay. They'll physically go into a ballroom, set up an operator that is UL and ASTM standards and make sure it works. Um, and then they'll leave the room. The instructors will troubleshoot something. <laughs> they come back in and they have to find what was wrong. So nice. it's, it's a hands-on school. It's not out in the field. It's in the ballroom, but yeah. It starts with electrical. Can you make the lights light blow, turn on? And can you make the switch work and stuff? Sure. Like that. So it's really a hands-on school that they have in November. So it'd be a it'd be a good well. I was going to say intro to automation for like if you've got some fence guys, but you guys are looking into gate operators because it seems like the two go hand in hand. Right. right? You, with those classes, we're not there yet with the fence installation or sales training, but with the with the gate design school and the technician school. You can be certified. Okay. With those. Okay. So, Let's talk a little bit about the certification. So does AFA does AFA do the certification of the students going through the courses? It's a, it's through ACI, which is a, an arm okay. of AFA. Okay. Okay. But it goes through an actual accreditation yep. arm of the of everything. Yeah, we have to follow certain standards or how we do the testing 
how it's monitored, how it's instructed. You know, the instructors don't know the test. I mean, they probably do because they know the industry. Sure. But they don't know that question seven is X, Y, Z. Interesting. So it gets away a little bit from the teaching to the test that we see right. in some of our right. traditional it, schools. The, the instructors, and if there's any gate instructors on here, there's all the read the manual. I might have left the letter or word out there, but read sure. the manual is always <laughs> what they say. And that's the same thing with the books. When you take the class, read the book because they're not going to teach to the test. There's things you may have to find on your own in the book, but it's all there. Interesting. I tell you what, when I was up at Fences Lake School in Waverly, I was jealous of the gate guys because it was sweltering. <laughs> and we were out in a field, no shade for about a quarter mile in any one direction. Hey, but Matt had that air-conditioned bathroom there. That's true. That was nice. That was very nice. But you're out in the sun. But, and, and to your point, too, so I did chain link the first day, and – Tony ran us all the way to dinner. Just, we've got to get this fence line done, which is good real world experience. Like you stay till the job's done. You don't leave it half done just cause it's four, but the vinyl guys got to left, got to leave early. <laughs> so See, you saw it. The vinyls guys get done early. So Yeah. And well, and we both got about the same amount accomplished, right? In terms of footage and education, all that. So, uh, and then we all, sh we show up just dripping wet and uh, the gate guys are like just hanging out at take now i don't want to minimize the education or anything like that but from my perspective having been out all day I'm like these guys just sat inside and okay interesting yeah, we're pushing it right to the end maybe a little over the gate guys are already sipping a couple beverages <laughs> right right they've covered they've covered the content they've done all that and like ah I think I'm on the wrong side of this industry. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Cause that we design, don't that design school set up. So, you know, the actual ASTM, the UL that's out mm -hmm. there. So you, when you're designing a gate, you don't forget that you may need an exit loop or you may need right. a sensor here or there. So that's really, and it's a good class. No. And that's the thing is, is that as I was mid sentence, I was like, I'm, I'm hearing myself say this. I don't want to minimize what goes on there. Right. So it, I've sat in on some of those classes. They're intense in the, what they are covering. Um, but it's, it's just a different training, right? It's a different pace, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but it is worthwhile if we did. So at Ozark fence, we don't handle gate operators. We've got a couple companies here in town that do a fantastic job at it. So rather than try to play third fiddle in town and, and do that, we, we refer out to these guys. And we're the same way. It, but it's good having foundational knowledge, though, right? So that as a fence professional, when I'm there talking to them about their fence, this came up a couple of weeks ago. They're they're wanting fence with columns, and they're wanting a really nice gate. So okay, so it sounds like we're planning on automating these. And, and different clients use different words, and you know, making these electric. Is that right? You pull up. You press a button, or maybe you don't anymore. Maybe you just pull up and it reads a card in your front bumper, and then it opens up. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. It's like, okay, so now I need to take that in consideration when we're looking at the post, the gates, when we're when we're talking about designing the columns, that sort of thing. To, to know, hey, we need to bring in an automation specialist here at some point, but I can at least cover the basics with you that we need to take these things into consideration. And one of the biggest. I'm the same way. I bring in a, a company to help us. But one of the biggest things is we're, I'm working with a customer right now where I'm like, okay, we have to bring the gate post back. But we're in these big pillars. I want to do it center. I'm like, you don't understand. There's a pinch point there. Yep. And so yep. you do have to have some knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just knowing how the gate operators are going to attach. Okay, so we need to design these gates with attach points that will – that the operators can use. So they're not trying to either weld on or bolt on something to the gate that the customer may or may not be happy with because these customers, like they were particular about how they wanted the gates to look and okay, so we need to design it into it rather than try to add it on later on. And it's, let's be honest, a lot of those customers have the money to spend. And so when yeah. you're like, Hey, we need, I don't like that look. 
and then you educate them on, hey, there's a pinch point. This could happen. This could happen. And then you're going to be sued. They, they pay attention real quick. Yeah. Yeah. This could open you up to liability. And this now you to liability like that. You as a homeowner have the liability here. I'm making you aware of it. And right. we're going to have a conversation about it, but ultimately the liability sits with you and all, the look is going to be relatively the same. Like you said, your post is going to move in the column. Like we're going to move this around a little bit, but you will notice it. Mr. Homeowner, your guests will not like no one driving past the gate will notice that it's not centered in the column. Um, but having gone through and sat in classes on the gate automation, the gate design, that sort of thing you at least have the foundational knowledge to have those conversations, even if you're not the one installing them. Yep. Say hello to a few more people here. Nick Franklin, what is up? Hello, hello, hello. Michael Taylor, bam is here. What's up, bam, bam. Speaking of expert stain and seal, if you know that brand, then you know, bam. Front rock fences says just stained my first fence with expert stain and seal. Love the stain. I love to hear it. We've we've tried a lot, and that was the one that we kind of kept coming back to. So it was for a reason, I think. Robert Luttrell says, Parrish, Kentucky, at Sticks Fencing. He's going to be one of our agricultural instructors. Nice. Yep. Nice. Him and Justin Neri are going to be the agricultural instructor. Okay. Okay. Very good. Ag something, like it's not big, it's not big in our market only because we've got – um, a couple ranchers that also install ag fence. So as it's hard, hard to compete with that. You know but what I mean? But the one thing we always hear from students when they're at, at the end of the day, you know, they're like, well, I didn't know the difference between low carb and high steel fencing or, oh, it's not really that hard. I can do it too. So they might mm -hmm. add it to their repertoire. You know, they might sure. want to not go into it full time ag fencing, but if Mrs. Johnson calls and said, Hey, I need, an acre of high tensile fence, they're not going to be afraid to do it then. That's a fair point. So as I'm sitting here listening to you say that, I mean, we've had, we've had projects that have mix and match, right? They'll say, Hey, I want this on the road frontage. I want like a wooden post and rail on the wood, on the road frontage. And then I want field fence, what we would call field fence down the sides around the back, that sort of thing. Um, and another good thought here. G says, good afternoon from England. What's up, G? Would love to chat. I've been fencing for 20 plus years. Very good. Very good. Ask away. Let's chat away. Michael Dean says, good morning from Alaska. Second year fence company owner, and I want to get involved with fencing community in the lower 48. This would be a great way. So yeah. um, there's a lot of great organizations. You know, today's conversation revolves around the AFA. I'm involved with AF. I serve on our the Midwest chapter board for the AFA. I think it's a great organization. There are I, there are others out there. I don't want to say it's the only one. We've got FWA and NAFCA, and there are great organizations out there. Getting plugged in with them would be a great idea. Come to Fence Tech. It's gonna, it'll be a bit of a flight from Alaska. It's going to be in Nashville. Oh, I just realized that like Alaska Airlines flies right to Cleveland direct. I think from Portland. Really? So he Portland, he can have a direct flight to Cleveland, and then he could be at fence school. Bingo. There you go. Michael, it's in three weeks. Great way to plug in. Divine Fence, what is up? Good afternoon, Ken, Joe, and Fence fam. How has the new shop been doing, Ken? Looked awesome, as well as your Joe been getting a lot done with Ozark Wireworks and all your other endeavors. Let's start with the first question. How's the new shop, Ken? So we're actually in the third interior rebuild okay you know i think you said i have three weeks so my conference room right now there's 100 sheets of drywall up there ah um, so yeah it'll, it'll be ready in three weeks trust me it might be <laughs> late nights but um the drywall guys are coming in uh, he's probably referring to when mark came out here and did a video uh of, it was just trusses and, and perlins at that time. yeah yeah it's good uh you know People always say, hey, you know, you see it on the social media. Hey, how big should I make my shop? <laughs> Whatever you think, triple it. You're right. And it's yes. still too small. But, no, it's working well. Um, you know, we don't know what, you know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. We don't know what the economy is going to do. Sure. I have a couple a couple other ideas, but let's, let's pump the brakes and 
figure it out first. Yep. See how things shake out a little bit. And Absolutely. The wire works have been good. Yeah. So we it's been a whirlwind of the last probably five or six weeks we've been running wire full time which for us is a big accomplishment so yeah we just started this back in august the machine i'll have to go back and look at some videos the machine got delivered either august or september um so I haven't been at it long as compared to others um, and we're learning a few things i i had visited if you guys watch the channel i went up to wyoming visited brenton manufacturing i watched their machines run i thought i had a pretty decent handle on it and like a lot of things you don't know what you don't know until you get into it because i was watching a, a machine that had been dialed in operated by guys that had been using it for years and so it was not not quite that right so uh but brigandy was nice enough to send over a trainer for a week and we got our feet under us but then we're also a brand new company right so we're we are weaving wire for ozark fence company primarily but we're also we don't have the capacity at ozark fence to take all of the wire that ozark wireworks produces so we're also selling to other folks speaking of matt warner in nebraska we're weaving up a lot of 10 foot wire for him at the moment um but we so we started reaching out to friends in the fencing industry saying hey if you do chain link we can make you some chain link and it's going to be manufactured by a fencing contractor we we're talking about barry making sense to go to homeland because as a fencing contractor he had experience with the product he knew what to look for and what how to how to talk to other fencing contractors and explain what they're doing well we felt like we have that advantage at Ozark Wireworks, that we're using fencing professionals. We train them how to use this machine. So now we're talking about, hey, what don't you like when your wire shows up? You know what I mean? Do you, we don't want to see a bunch of hand-twisted twists. We don't want to see a lot of unclosed loops or unclosed knuckles. Let's watch for that. Especially for, for whatever reason, we used to get rolls where in the middle of the roll there'd be a missing weave like it it hit the top and the bottom but not in the middle so we'd have to unweave it reweave it like guys let's watch for that if we don't like doing it then let or we don't like ha installing it let's not send it out to be installed so um, and i think that's catching on so we've got we've been running five six weeks solid and we've got another at least three weeks of of wire production so Things are off to the races, but um, yeah, and all your other endeavors. So we also at Ozark Fence, uh, e-commerce is coming back online and uh, not back online. It's just the fence season's getting busier. So poor Eric is down in ship land, just shipping packages out as fast as he can. Like everyone, we could use about two or three more skilled guys, but uh, the market is what the market is. Are you guys seeing that over there, Ken? As far oh, yeah. as just workforce availability, yeah, it's uh, you know I think you were on that call yesterday with with my salesman and yeah. I'm gonna look into their new new thing they're doing, but yeah. yeah, I mean it's you know I'm fortunate enough that you know there was a question on one of the on one of the preamps that hey find out what how Ken can do it well I can do it because I have a great team sure you know, my family works here I have a great team of guys um, and so. Yeah, when when you get those people, you hold on to them. You take care of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. It's it's hard. So what what Matt was talking about is uh, called Hire Click, and we uh, we use it. So he had introduced it to me a little bit before he came on the show to talk about it, just so I could actually have some working knowledge of how it worked. Um, so we use it. I like it. So what it does is it goes out to, and I can't remember all of them, but the main hiring sites and then others put your job posting the same job posting at all of them but what it does is it aggregates all the applicants into one place so we only have to log into one place to see all the applicants rather than saying okay i'm gonna i gotta put tabs for these four places that i'm gonna have all my ads in and i got copy and paste the ads and anyway so it works pretty well but the workforce is what the workforce is so yeah, which Sorry, I was talking to a, a local fence company here the other day, and he gets temps in. Yep. And, you know, a couple of office girls have been great, and maybe one hasn't been great. Yeah. The percentage is a lot smaller in the field. You get bodies showing up, but 
the ones that actually he can hire after 90 days is really slim. Yeah. We've, we've gone down that road before with, with temp services and, um, I don't know, mixed, mixed bag would be the best, best way to describe it. Like you said, sometimes you get folks that are great, but other times you just, you just don't. And so anyway, it, it, hiring directly is probably our preferred way of doing it. Um, but and then higher click makes it easy to do it. Michael Dean asks, what are the dates for AFAU in Ohio? So it's June 4th through the 9th. The sales school will be June 5th and 6th. The 4th is a, so the 4th is a welcome dinner and I'm, I'm, we I don't even know why we haven't talked about this yet. Yeah. But we'll have a welcome dinner. We always, the instructors dress up a little bit. We welcome all in, we tell them what to expect, you know, and, but this year we have a individual, we just got done talking about coming in and talking Matt Warner. Okay. Okay. And then he's going to stick around and do his Monday morning motivational. I love that. So that's good. So people that have seen it and used it, they understand it, but we're going to bring it to everyone there at the school Monday morning. And then we're going to kick the school off. I mean, we're kicking the school off with a dinner the night before, but really that Monday morning, I mean, if you've ever been to one of Matt's things, you're going to be pumped, ready to go. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So, very cool, very cool. So check. So Kent, how? So where can they find more information about it, so and where can the they American, register? Yeah, AmericanFenceAssociation.com. Okay. They, it it should be on the main page right now. Yeah. But if they go in the upper right corner, of the calendar, it'll be under the calendar events for Fence Week. Okay. Um, there's the Fence Installation School and the Sales Training School. There's two different rates. Um, sure. I think we're past the early early bird registration right now, yeah. but you still have to, I mean, it was 50 bucks. So you really sure. have time. Um, if you're, if, if you are coming from Alaska or anywhere else, we have two airports that were, are within 10 minutes of each other between Cleveland, which is CLE or Canton Akron, which is CAK. And okay. maybe at the end you can go back and look at the football hall of fame on the way home. Who knows? Sure. 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 Absolutely. Or if you come into Cleveland, you go to the rock and roll hall of fame. We got hall of fames everywhere in Ohio. <laughs> big hall of fame place yep. michael dean wants to know can you go over the different coatings for chain link absolutely we actually have a video that answers this exact thing in detail i say in detail with actual like examples of each um so you've got extruded extruded bonded fused bonded kind of the main three categories uh, extruded is a hot vinyl liquid extrusion that is laid over a galvanized steel rod uh, or wire uh, it's not not technically bonded to it it's just extruded over it now it's a pretty tough coating in general so i don't want to minimize what it is the next step up would be extruded bonded so an adhering layer think glue is added to the steel rod before it goes through the vinyl coating the extrusion so the difference being just plain extruded if it gets a nick you can peel it off pretty easily extruded bonded you really got to work at it. you got to break that adhering layer before it'll come off. So if it gets nicked with a weed eater, it won't separate as easily as extruded will. Uh, you see some old, I've seen some old extruded wire that just cracks over time, just UV exposure, I suppose. So extruded bonded would help that from happening. The third is fuse bonded. Now with, you can also, how do I want to address this? So the core is typically thicker so an extruded and extruded bonded we carry and this is different for everyone i suppose an eight gauge finish with an 11 gauge core now with fuse bonded think think powder coating in that it's a thinner layer but it is a tough layer it's not powder coating but think that uh, so we get a nine gauge core with an eight gauge finish so thicker wire stronger wire that then the coating is fused to the wire in the application process so when if you want to get this coating off the wire you literally have to whittle it off and this is the example i show in the video where i can make a nick with a knife and extrude it and it peels off I can, if I use my fingernails, I can get the extruded bonded off, fuse bonded. I have to cut every little slice off of it because there is no peeling it. I'd break my fingernails for I tried to peel that fuse bonded off. Um, I hope that makes sense. Ken, did I do a decent job explaining I that? I think so, yeah. I mean, 
we're getting some fused bonded vinyl coated uh, from a supplier that's real close to us right here. So yeah, um, we're going to use some of that at the school. Nice. I like those guys. I Akron. Yeah. Yeah, I love those guys a lot. They're they're actually who we get our extruded, extruded, bonded, and fuse bonded from. So, good. Bill's a good guy. Bill's yep. a good guy. So, um, I, Michael, I hope I explained that sufficiently for you. If you have follow up questions, let me know. But like I said, there is also a video on the YouTube channel. Uh, you're watching this on YouTube, so here on the channel there is a video, kind of going more in depth on that and with a visual explanation of the different coatings. So, well, Ken, we're getting pretty close to an hour here. What haven't we covered? You know, we got a we got an almost an all star event of instructors. We have well, we talked about it, but we have Barry Baker and Kevin Nelson. Barry Baker, obviously from Homeland. Kevin Nelson's from Hip Square in Florida. Okay, yeah. So uh, we try to we try to team up, have two instructors in each. We're training more because we are starting to go around the country and. You know, I've been at almost every one of these events, but let's let's get it where I don't have to bring someone from Florida to go to Sacramento. Sure, sure, uh, absolutely. You know, it doesn't make sense, but uh, we talked about uh, agriculture. We have Justin Neri and Robert Luttrell uh, okay. from Taylor Fencing in Iowa, and uh, Robert is from uh, Sticks Fencing in Paris, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, yep. We have Wood. We have Dan Wheeler. You know, you may have heard of this guy before. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Yeah. We'll say River City Fence. He might be yes. known for something else, but yeah. out of Iowa. <laughs> and we're having uh, Chris Steele coming up from High Steel Fencing. Nice. Very nice. Um, ornamental. We're going to have Alan Olson from SWI. Okay. And we're going to have a guy that likes to talk a little bit, Cannon Johnson from uh, Jackson <laughs> Fence. Very um, good. Very and, good. Um, on our chain link, we have. Dave Schmitz from Lem Lemke Fence in Wisconsin. Okay. And we have a new instructor coming in, Rory Halliburton from Halliburton Fence in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, got an all-star class. We are student or teachers this year, so uh, it's it, it's going to be a good time. I tell you what, if even if like I don't know, go to some of the training so that you could be at those dinners. I yeah. think I like. I'd want to be. I'd want to sit at a table and just hear the conversations that happen between these guys. So, like I said, some we're, we found, especially with Texas, everyone wants to go to Texas barbecue or do this or do that. Sure. But some of the times the dinners were like, "Hello, where's everyone at?" So we're just going to do our welcome dinner Sunday. Okay. We're going to do the graduation dinner and a chapter dinner for Northern Ohio on Tuesday for the sales training, and then a Northern Ohio chapter dinner. Okay. Um, we're working on finishing up with a speaker. We can't really announce anything yet, but sure. he's a fencer that has an awesome hobby, if not another part-time or full-time job that okay. everyone's going to love. Because the one thing years ago, uh, Mark Olson told me is you can't work your company 24-7. You have to yeah. go on vacations. You have to have another hobby. You have to do something. Yeah. So this person we're talking to, and hopefully it works out. It's going to be a great speaker for Tuesday night. Okay. And then Friday night, we have a graduation uh, for the fence school. Bobby Batchelor, who is our president this year. Yeah. He's going to be coming up from the Carolinas and speaking to us. Uh, and so it's so we have three great nights of dinner. Um, between the two hotels, there is a, 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 a sipping post, if you want to call it ah. that. Okay. And I, we've heard from students in the past that they get more sometimes out of yes. sitting in a bar with guys and girls. Yep. than in the classroom they get a lot you know we always yeah. hear people hey how did you learn he goes well i thought it's going to drink from a garden hose but you guys turn on a four inch fire hose <laughs> for me and yeah. i learned so much yeah. so um yeah you gain so much from going from the education yeah the the networking is like a whole other benefit like a side it's not really even a side benefit it's just the other half of this right. is that you get to be with guys in the evenings when you're just chatting about, did you catch this part? Did you catch that part? Well, this is interesting. Well, here's how I, you know, here's how I do stuff like this. And what do you guys see in your market? Like, that's the best question ever. Like, how do you guys see this done where you guys are from? Um, the networking itself, I've met so many guys who now I call friends just from the networking portion of these, not necessarily even the training. I don't want to minimize the training, but the no. networking is a whole other portion of this. I mean, some people look at the price. They're like, "Oh my gosh, what are, you know? What am I really getting out of it?" 
there's so much you're getting out of it because of the networking that we don't even talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the nice thing is too, like in our area, we have a lot of good fencers in this area. You know, sure. some have called me, you know, there's a guy that borrows my fence hog from me. Nice. You know, and so are we competition on a couple jobs? Am I going to be thumbs up to him and, and stick my nose up in the air to him? You, you can't, but sometimes sure. it's nice when you're dealing, when you're meeting with people, say the gentleman from Alaska comes down and you have a question, Hey, what do you think of this? You know, you're going to get a true answer. Not that your buddy down the road is going to try to <coughs> bib to you and, and tell you a way to fail. Sure. You know right. in the back of your head, a guy 300, 400 miles away is going to give you an honest answer. Right. He has no dog in that fight one way or the other. <coughs> Excuse me. I swallowed sideways or something. Ken, who's who's cooking that welcome dinner? Uh, it's going to be the banquet facility. Now, there oh, okay. is a rumor that there may be some <coughs> Ken's meat one night. Okay. Okay. I was going to say because we can't have you on without talking about Ken's meat can't do that oh man i mean you don't have to cry about it it's I, I i'm just overwhelmed with the thought of all this <laughs> yeah i mean there's oh, a man. video there's a video out there where mark uh went there with it we'll say <laughs> and um it, it's it's stuck you know so um that's one of my instagram screen names is ken's meat but yep try to put on there i used to be a chef in a prior life okay okay so, you know, I do like grilling and smoking and, you know, I do have three or four or five or six cooking apparatuses <laughs> outside. Um, nice. You know, we might have a, I think I have a Traeger at home. I have a Traeger here at the shop and I have a Traeger down in our place in Florida. So, you know, I, you know, we have a couple of them. Got a few, got a few. Ken, one of the questions I... It, my wife calls the Traeger a man crock pot. <clears throat> Fair. Put it on, forget about it. That's fair. We've got one here at the shop because yeah. we'll do final Fridays where we'll do lunch at the last Friday of every month. I love just firing that thing up, putting a tri tip on it, and just letting it go until lunchtime. And you just pull it off and know it's it's ready. Yeah. So there is something to that. Now there's some folks that uh, have different thoughts on it. You know, they call it cheating and this and that. So I mean, listen, I've got a uh, Kamado at home. Okay, so when I want to like get technical with it, I can, but at work's not the place. Right. Ken, the question I was supposed to ask you in the beginning, the very first question I was supposed to ask you uh, was more around, so you travel for AFA, you putting on these events, you, you play some Florida, that sort of thing. And that's what made me think about this. Can you speak for a minute about the value of a team, like what – what allows you to travel to these AFA events, basically spend time away from the company without worrying about the company? I don't not worry about the company, well, but I'm comfortable. Yeah. So we yeah. have a great team in place. Um, you know, occasionally, you know, I was out in Sacramento and was it a real question or was it him jabbing me that he <laughs> called me at, six o'clock normal our time but it was three o'clock out in sacramento I'm like hello he goes oh sorry i forgot <laughs> <He's laughing. laughs> but um you know they they know how we like to do things here at forever fence and rail sure um it's funny because when i get ready to do these events i will physically go out and lay things out like okay this job this job this job this job this job, this job. make sure we have everything there so in the back of my head i know Everything's there for that particular job. Sure. Um, but no, we have a great team. They can they can go in, and they I am. I'm a phone call away or a text away. The, the great the great thing about technology these days is we can do a video conference. I can say, okay, yep. if you're over by that post or over by that corner of the house, there's a, a sprinkler line. Watch out for it. Even though I yep. told about it, you know, sure. we have different CRM stuff that we can they can log into and look at pictures and stuff like that. So yep, yeah, the video call is is a nice feature. It's a nice function. Um, I it's it's an invention that we use quite a lot. Um, we also use the photo sharing app. Uh, we use Company Cam. But there's others out there um, to where we can share this stuff real time. One. I can do all the walk to your point. I can do all the walkthroughs before I leave, and I can mark it up, circle so like watch out for this. 
this goes this way, that sort of thing. So where, I mean, it used to be we would have to go do on sites the morning up. We'd go out with the crew, say, hey, here's what we talked about. Gate goes here. This line goes, the finish side goes this way. We're now just through technology. We can help with that a lot. But and the other uh, thing I found that, <laughs> that I really like doing too is on the sheets, because we'll give them a folder. Sure. But on the sheets, I'll actually, if it's a septic line, I'll highlight it green. The same way Oops marks it, I'll actually highlight that area in those colors. Nice. Nice. What? What do you call your locating service? So we're in Ohio. Yeah. So it's Ohio Utility P Protection System. <laughs> so it's and, and when you hit something, you say, well, right. you say oops and not anything else. But, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Missouri doesn't have anything nearly that neat. Um, it's just Missouri one call, but um, but oops also makes sense because we uh, <clears throat> we find a fair amount of lines um, that no one knew were there. So um, for whatever reason, and this could be the same elsewhere, um, our water lines are done by measurement and by compass headings. So it's <laughs> from this junction go thirty two degrees for this many feet. It's like you can imagine we hit water lines all the time because they'll look they go oh i thought they're looking at like a hand draw in some towns yeah. a hand drawing going oh yep you found the main <laughs> well i know i did there's a there's a water fountain in the front yard i know i found the main like and the thing that cracks me up is in, in our area especially the county i'm in they'll mark up to the water chalk box yeah the turnoff valve they won't mark yes. anywhere else nine times out of ten it's six eight feet down in the ground sure yeah but it's like what are you doing yep they do the same here they'll mark to the meter because they'll say anything past the meter is private utilities and we don't mark private utilities well the water meters at the road so yeah it's but they'll mark sewer all the way to the house yeah. like well and we could tell we could tell a whole eight hour series of, of 811 <laughs> issues the, you know, I always tell if there's anyone new on here listening, I always tell them if you hit a line, you need to physically take photos first because the, that yes. company is going to come try to cover their butt that they marked it wrong originally. Well, and there's times you may hit a legit that you actually did it yourself. Yeah, right. There's a lot of times that they mark it wrong and then they'll try to cover their butt because they have to pay for it. Well, because it's part of the process that they come refresh the markings. Right. But like, they're supposed to do it in white. Oh. If you have a hit, they're supposed to do it in white. Interesting. So when they do their investigation, they can see it. Uh-huh. Well, that that's new. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, usually they'll just come paint right over it. Or, to your point, paint it for the first time. Go, oh, yeah. yeah. Goes right through here. And then your point's right. You take pictures when you call it in. Because you can bet they're taking pictures when they come out. You know, it's in so all of our guys obviously have smartphones where they can take pictures, but they also have measuring tapes on them for building the fence. So I say, guys, I want a measurement from the mark to the hit yep. to the line. I in an overall shot and a close up shot of the measurement. So we can look at the overall shot and we can zoom in to say, hey, we're not there's no funny business here with our measurements, but you are 32 inches off the line which in the state of Missouri is out of bounds. Right. right. So 24 inches on either side, two foot on either side of the mark is, is uh, inbounds. Anything outside of that's out of bounds and we're not liable for that. So now the nice thing is with technology in, improving constantly across the board, the marking technology is working out a little bit nicer too, to where they're getting more accurate, but they're facing the same labor shortages. Everyone else is. You know, like they've got guys out there 12 hours a day marking lines, racking up massive overtime. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to speak badly on these guys. Sometimes it's just human error and humans are humans, you know. But anyway, it, it doesn't feel that way, though, when you get the bill for it. No. When they say, hey, you, you know, I, I tell this story a lot to where and this is when I was in, on the installation side. 
and uh, my dad owned the company. We were doing a, a big fence uh, right near the interstate, and he called it in. It was a it was a big project, so he called for an on site meeting. And uh, the communications provider, Mediacom, they just sent a response back, clear, no conflict. So he called him and said, hey, I'd really like for you guys to be here to see exactly what we're doing. They said, no, no, we don't have anything on the property. So we're clear, no conflict. We're not going to spend the time to go out there. Okay. And he had that, you know, in the email, they send you a report or whatever. So we're out there digging. And it was like the third hole. It was in the very beginning skidsters going and it's going and he goes <laughs> well there's no trees around so we found something there's no paint on the ground we pull it up now this was early 2000s we pull up a fiber that's like this like it's as big it's easily larger than my wrist and for a fiber line that's that's like a main line. Now, this was also back in the day where you couldn't repair fiber. Like you ripped it up from one junction to the next junction. And so I called dad. I was like, hey, um, we did a thing and I need you to come see this. Uh, like I'm going to call it in and all that, but you need to see this. And um, so of anyway, colors, wasn't there? what's that? There was a lot of pretty colors in the wire. Oh, there? it was something. It was something to behold. So. I call it in and this guy, and it was like, it's funny the response time when you hit something like that. Oh, now, yeah. when your internet goes out, it'll be, it'll be a day. You hit an internet line and it's minutes. <laughs> now we were, we were close to their office. So like that plays a role in this, but he, this guy shows up and he goes, I want to know who's in charge here. <laughs> I guess me at this point, I don't know. He goes, uh, what were you thinking? Da, 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 da. I was like, well, listen, my dad said we got the clear no conflict. So he's he's bringing the email with him. He's on his way here, but there was no markings. There was nothing. He goes, well, I'll tell you what. And he starts explaining to me the process they're going to have to go through. He goes, everyone south of this interstate, and there's a lot of folks on the other side of this interstate, is out of internet right now because of you. I'm like, well, I mean, I could argue it's because of you, because right. you guys didn't mark it. If you marked it, I wouldn't have dug there. But uh, we got we got a mid five figure bill for that uh, for the hit, and we just mailed it back with the email saying it was clear no conflict. Like I'm sure somebody's going to pay for this, but it will not be us. Um, anyway, importance yeah, of like, taking pictures. I like the calls when you do the the, the eight one one, and the fiber companies like, what day are you going to be there? <laughs> and you tell them, and they're waiting for you. Yeah. Uh, this particular one had some high security clearance and went to the airport and he watched us even though we were 30 feet away he physically had stayed there all day and watched us because wow. if we if we would have hit that one we would have shut down some major things yeah yeah that would have had some consequences behind it i mean 30 foot off it wouldn't be your consequences no. but it'd be somebody's you can bet that all right let's start let's start landing the plane i guess <laughs> So, uh, Finchie says, thanks for the interesting info and discussion as always. Thanks for the industry education. Absolutely. That's, that's what I enjoy. And I think Ken, I, I, I would hazard to guess you do it the same way. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that's why we do it is try to help the industry. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, you, I know you do it at fence tech. You don't even have to wear your name tag and people know who you are. Sure. Uh, sure. I've been, Fortune. I actually did the math when I was going to California because I've never been to California before. So when I went to Sacramento, I think I've been to 14 states because of the AFA. Okay. But nice. I met a lot of different people through these different schools and educations and meetings and stuff like that. And so it's, it is always fun to learn how they do things, how I might be able to use it here or me, or definitely can't use it, but it, it, sure. it, it's always in my mind. Well, you can't use it right then. That's I can't tell you how many times I've filed something like that away. You're like, well, it doesn't apply, but I'll remember it or whatever. And then a year later, you come into something, you're like, oh, it does apply. Or you're talking to somebody else. Like in one of these Facebook groups, someone says, hey, da 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 And you can reiterate, well, hey, this is what I had heard and how you handle this, that, or the other. So it's it, it works all the way around. It's definitely, you know, like everyone calls it, it is a fence family. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
everybody's here for everybody. I mean, that's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which association you're with or anything. Right. We're all in it for the same thing. Well, that's it. I mean, that's the thing. I, I think, you know, no matter, like you said, no matter what association, I think if you were to group, if you were to look at the people, you know, the, the people involved with all these, they all look the same. They're all the same, right? It's, it's the same core group of people. Uh, and I'm sure there's, there's differences here and there, but it's like you said, it's a family that's here for each other. Um, I know you're the same way as us to where we've got guys in town to where, like you said, the guy borrowing the fence hog, we've got guys that'll call up saying, Hey, do you have four, six and five, eight stone tops? I, I screwed up or they screwed up and didn't ship them, whatever. I need four and the dome tops are all I need to complete this thing. Yep. Like, yeah, come get them. And then when you show up, bring them back. Like, that's, that's just how this whole thing works. Right. Um, unfortunately, that those that is every case, right? Like there, there's some outliers there too. But um, together we get better. You know, the rising tide raises all the ships. Is something that I like to, I like to reiterate. Um, so we're all kind of in this whole thing together. Yep. So if you are looking to either further your own knowledge or friend of some of your newer employees, that definitely would look at uh, at Fence Week here in about three weeks. Yeah. So check it out then on the AFA's website. should be on the front page. If for whatever reason you don't see it, top right calendar, you can click on it, whether you're talking about the fence installation school, the sales training, uh, you can get registered uh, to show up. Yep. Do they have to register? Yeah, it's hard for them because we do have PPE that in the fence field. Uh, we do have books for both classes, the sales yep. training and the fence week. We do have extras, and, and we have signed people up the day of. Sure. But part of the – unless you're a commuter, and I guess I should talk on that. If you're a commuter here local to Ohio, um, reach out to AFA. And if you're not – because that tuition includes a hotel stay. Oh, okay. So okay. So you're going to commute to it. Um, we're going to ask that you come to Sunday dinner, and we're going to ask sure. that you do different things. But we do have a, a commuter rate. So – just okay. reach out to member services at AFA. We'll be able to help you out. Um, Good to know. But for the most part, just sign up on AFA's website. Yeah. That way everyone knows you're coming and that you got a seat available if you need it. Because yeah. I know some of those, uh, some of them fill up, you know, to oh, where yeah. it's like there's only so much capacity too. So I mean, registering guarantees you a seat. To be fair to some of the people that are signed up, you know, yes, we have two instructors. We could, we could, possibly do 15 per group yeah but we want to keep the group between eight and ten because there's going to be someone left out if we don't and we want to make sure, sure that they get the full amount of knowledge that they can get yeah we yeah we don't so want you... the guy sitting in the back on his cell phone and oh i know how to do that well you may know how to do it but we're trying to show you efficiencies and and different techniques well and and could you help us explain this then right like that's that happened a lot in the training I was involved in. Like you said, Tony and Alan were there leading the discussions, but the discussions were very much two sided to where like we were kind of giving feedback as to how we do these particular things. So, and if like I that, remember correct, Sean took over the bias cutting. Yeah, he did. So, I mean, yeah. you know, that there was a gentleman that went to Baton Rouge when we had our two day school in Baton Rouge. He was actually one of our new instructors in Sacramento for chain link. So we see these superstars of the class. I mean, everyone's good, but we see some superstars. Sure. And we're going we're gonna to hopefully invite them to share their knowledge in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all fencing contractors, right? right? Whether you're on the instruction side or the learning side. Um, and sometimes you can be both. Right. A lot of times you can be both. So, guys, for more information, check out the AFA's website. Uh, should be on the front page. If not, check out the calendar at the top right corner so you can be registered to guarantee your seat. Right. Again, I appreciate you being on, taking time out of your Saturday to come on and talk about fence. I appreciate that a lot. No problem. Have a great weekend. You too. And for all the moms, happy Mother's Day tomorrow. That's right. That's right. Guys, <laughs> remember, Mother's Day is tomorrow. So on your way home, you ought to, you ought to pick some flowers up. Amazon Prime, how quick can it get there? Right. Well, listen, Amazon Prime's done. Like you're, <laughs> if you're, you cannot Amazon Prime anything at this point because it's tomorrow. But 
on your way home tonight. And I'm saying this as a guy that's going to stop by the store on my way home tonight. So <laughs> yeah, I'm fortunate enough that I have a 21, a 19, and a 16-year-old. There you go. And they, they even have their own money, which is even better. Oh, tell me about this story. I I, I dream of this. (laughs) But I do have to probably go get something for my mother yet today. Yeah, yeah. Stop by, pick up some flowers and some chocolates if you want to do like the traditional like uh, thing. But uh, yeah, guys, don't forget Mother's Day tomorrow. So anyway, Ken, thank you so much. Guys, if you're out there watching, thank you so much for tuning in live. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it a lot. For now... Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. I'll see you next week.